Hey, good morning. So we are uh, on page 47A, and we've been uh, talking about the uh, laws of um, how to honor, uh, when do you honor one's Rebbe or someone important. And um, we spoke about by the, uh, when traveling, if there's an uh, obligation to honor uh, one's Rebbe and um, who washes first at a, uh, when, you're, when people are having a su'uda, who is the one to, uh, to wash first. And we saw Shulchan Aruch yesterday about the uh, scenes from our Gemara that the important person should wash first. But in Shulchan Aruch, it brings uh, the opinion of the Rosh that really uh, uh, he used to wash last. And it has to do with the fact that nowadays um, there's a difference between the way we have our meals, communal meals, and the way they would have their meal with, uh, they would be brought their table, uh, little tables in front of them. And we have a communal meal all together. And uh, it wouldn't be right maybe for the uh, person in charge to wait uh, for everyone else and wait and have to keep his hands clean before he uh, breaks bread and so on. And therefore, uh, there is room to say that the law of the Gemara doesn't apply because the scenario is different. Um, but uh, on the other hand, there is room to say that, no, maybe it still applies to uh, the, same, the same rule that applied there, possibly applies even nowadays, uh, because the brysa doesn't seem to differentiate between the two cases where, uh, where, the, um, where they would bring the table in front of them and he would have a table, he would have his food in front of him or not. The brysa seems to say it as a blanket statement, to, as a general statement that, uh, you know, you first give the, the, uh, the balabayas uh, to, uh, to wash, and the understanding, if you want to, if you, what would the understanding be if you learn it that way, which is uh, contrary to the way the rush followed? This is the the, the different way of learning. The the uh, just assuming that it applies in all cases. Why would that? Why would it apply to a balabayas who is um, uh, who who is uh, uh, every? He's going to have to wait there till everyone finishes washing, why would he do that? And the answer is because this is the honor for him to wash first and to show everyone that he is the one who's going to be slicing the bread. He's going to be the one who's breaking bread and reciting the bracha. So it somehow fits with the, uh, with the concept of that he's the one who's, uh, who's boss. And so he's washing first and he's sitting there. Everyone can see that he's the one in charge. So it sort of has some element of covet as well, even though, it also has a, um, a drawback. Well, it comes out that there's no way to, there's the, sometimes you can't, you can't uh, fit all, you can't make things perfect. There's sometimes, you know, you're going to have to, everything comes with its, with its challenges. Yes, Susan. When there are s several rabbis of equal knowledge and equal respect, then how, how is that decided? <laughs> Well, generally, it's the Baal Habayis, the one in charge, the owner, the host. He's a, we learned that a while back. In other he's words, the one who, who breaks, owns the property and he's the one who breaks. The he's the one who breaks bread. But th there are, I mean, th there are times when you could honor other people and, and give them, like, you know, you'll, you'll go to a Shabbos table and you'll see, like, five of the people get their own chalos, their own, they, they, all of them oh. breaking bread. So, so, okay. so, you know, that's a way you could do it for people that deserve honor. And generally you don't differentiate because one rabbi is gonna be insulted if you look at the other rabbi as greater. So generally, if you're gonna give one, you give all of them. And sometimes you do it to married couples. All the married couples get their own challah. You know, that would be like a way to do it. Otherwise you're gonna insult people right. that uh, uh, this guy, this rabbi is bigger than me. That's what he thinks. Right. That exactly. rabbi is better than I am. Yeah. You know, now I'm sure the rabbis are very humble, but, uh, you know, you don't want to just maybe a slight uh, insult or, you know, might, might, might be uh, painful to someone. So uh, uh, the, 
the the proper way of doing all these things. This is the source source of it. Is is seems to be this this gemara, and um, and then the gemara had its interesting thing about the uh, yamachabed uh, people when it comes to a uh, entering a room that's an honorable entrance, uh, a, a room that should have a mezuzah, it's fit for a mezuzah. And what, one what? of the opinions says that that excludes if you're uh, jumping through a hole in the wall, you don't need to give honor to uh, someone more important. But if you're going through a proper doorway, then you say, oh, I'd like to let you go first. Yes, uh, what, One more question. Uh, is a balabusta the same as a balabais? Well, it's actually the female generally. A balabusta is like a, okay. uh, Thank is, you. is generally the term used for the... Uh, for the, the for the wife who, who's very um, very organized and very uh, balabatish, you know, very um, official and uh, formal, and uh, and has everything perfect, you know, has you know always has uh, cake and you know ready to serve and so on. Yes, uh, Mordechai, did you want to say something? You're, you're muted. Just one second. Mordechai wants to say something. Yeah, isn't there a, a story with uh, the Alter Rebbe and, uh, and his Mechutza and Ade Hasana? They were trying to figure out which one of them should enter the room first. And uh, one of them said, uh, let's, let's just walk through the walls. And they did. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, I, I am not a master of stories, but David Olensky, uh, I believe, is a pretty big master of stories he might remember that david are you with us over there he's hiding behind the uh the screen but uh maybe uh when he comes back maybe we'll ask him if he's i'm not familiar with the story but it's it does ring a bell but i don't know i don't it definitely don't uh, it's not clear to me uh but it sounds good sounds like it would be applicable to this tomorrow yeah interesting okay uh um ben i wanted ben? to yeah i wanted to say to susan Balabuste is in an equation to a balabus, not to balabait, because it's in Yiddish. Balabait is in Hebrew. It would be baalat abait or baalabait in Hebrew. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ben, for clarifying that. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> So the, the other explanation of uh, 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 what this is excluding is uh, uh, only a room that has a mezuzah and uh, it would exclude like a bathroom or a, a room that uh, is uh, not of honor. So therefore, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't uh, you wouldn't show honor by letting someone by having someone go first. OK, so. Uh, then the Gemara had the story of Ravin and Abaye, and um, that, actually that was right. That was part of the story. So uh, we're up to the Gemara of Amar Reb Yehuda Berei Derav Shmuel. Rab Yehuda Berei Derav Shmuel Bar Shalos. This is um, let's see about ten lines down from the top of the page, about forty-seven A. And the Gemara says that Amar Rab Yehuda Berei Derav Shmuel Bar Shalos Mishmei Derav. <laughs> The um, those that are reclining, they are not allowed to taste to eat anything until the person who breaks bread, who slices the the bread, until he is Tayyam until he tastes it. So the Gemara then says, Yosef Rav Safra v'ka'amar litoyim. That Rav Safra, he said another version of this, and that was that it should be, instead of eating, it should be, um, um, you're not allowed to taste until the uh, host um, tastes or until the host eats, which which means again the wording is Yosef Rav Safra, Rav Safra sat and he heard you know what Rabbi Yehuda Marab said about you're not allowed to eat before the boitzeya 
eats before the slicer, the person who slices eats. And uh, he said, no, it's a little different wording. It's uh, litaim itmar. It was said litaim, um, that you're not allowed to uh, taste until the boitseya, until the slicer uh, uh, eats or tastes. So the Gemara says, Lamai nafkamina. What is uh, the difference if, if it's uh, you're not allowed to eat before he eats, you're not allowed to taste? I mean, it's basically the same thing. So the Gemara answers, it, it teaches us, Shachai of Adam, Loimar Belashin A person is obligated to say things in the Lashin of his Rebbe, in the, in the, uh, the same language as his Rebbe. It means if you if a person's teacher says something a certain way, so the student should follow that. And um, brought down that the reason for it is there was obviously a purpose why the Rebbe said it in a certain way, and um, and sometimes from the from the way it was said, you could actually derive certain lessons, um, and or you could lose some of the meaning from from the emphasis on certain words if you, you say it differently and uh, therefore uh, he he corrected him even though it doesn't seem here to make much of a difference but a person should be familiar with saying things in the in the lushan of his Rebbe and um, and uh, that would be uh, the appropriate way to uh, repeat something and I guess we could understand it from the uh, from the telephone game where, you know, you see how things, once you change it a little, everything gets changed. It changes uh, more and more. And uh, therefore, uh, you know, definitely is uh, you try to, if you try to be exact in how you say something the same way that your teacher said it, hopefully it won't, uh, it won't get diluted uh, or, adulterated uh, afterwards. It will stay the same pure wording of your Rebbe. So that's the, uh, the first statement over here. And what this uh, statement is saying is about not taking, partaking of food before the person who says the bracha partakes of the food, right? That's basically what we're learning here. Uh, Tysus over here has a major question. And he deals with the fact that there is a Gemara that has, talks about uh, an Amaira. There was an Amaira, you know, before they had Sidurim, and you can look things up very easily in a Siddur, before they had that. So one of the Amairaim was unsure at some point, uh, how to do the day kiddush. The day kiddush is a little different than the night kiddush. The night kiddush, we know you have a bracha very pre hagofen, and you have a bracha afterwards uh, about Shabbos. The day kiddush, he was a little unsure. Is it just the bracha very pre hagofen, or is there an additional bracha that's supposed to be recited? The night kiddush is considered biblical, at least depending, depending on if you fulfilled the biblical obligation by davening or not, but if you didn't, so then the Kiddush itself would be considered biblical. Seemingly, it would be considered biblical because it says in the Torah that you have to honor the Shabbos and part of honoring it, Zohar, Zohar, Siyama Shabbos, the Kadri, Zohrehu, you have to remember the Shabbos with, uh, with Kiddush. So, uh, it's possible that you fulfill the biblical obligation when you say the bracha, Baruch HaTah Hashem HaKadosh Shabbos and Davani, but it's not so simple. And uh, therefore, there's definitely room to situations where, especially if the person didn't daven, so the Kiddush would be considered biblical, and that would be a mitzvah to say the bracha, the, the bracha on the Kiddush, or the Makadesh Shabbos on the Kiddush. Uh, the question by, de- by day, we know, is a rabbinic obligation to do Kiddush. In fact, that's why we call it Kiddusha Rabbo. On Shabbos day, there's a term you use. It's the big Kiddush. Why do you call it the big Kiddush? Because people might come to minimize the importance of the Kiddush by day because it's only uh, rabbinic. So therefore the term, the title of that Kiddush is called Kiddusha Rabbo. It's the, the big Kiddush. It's just to sort of like 
push off any thought that you might think it's, it's, it's insignificant. So we call it the big Kiddush. So the big Kiddush, so Kiddush Rabba by day, so this Amoira was unsure how to uh, say the Kiddush. And as I said, he didn't have Sidurim in those days. He didn't have benches that they give out at bar mitzvahs or anything. So he uh, decided he wasn't going to embarrass himself. So he figured, let me make Kiddush by saying the bracha on the line. You know, he's being honored to sue the Kiddush for everyone. So he figured, let me do the Kiddush on the line. And let me see what happens. I'll say the bracha. I'll see if anyone drinks, you know, I'll know that that's all. If there's something else, I'm sure they'll correct me. They'll say, no, no you know, they'll, they'll tell me uh, what bracha to say. So sure enough, he do, does the bracha on the wine. And there's an elderly man there who obviously is, must be a knowledgeable individual. And uh, he starts uh, drinking, bends down and is drinking. He's like, oh, okay, that's it. I guess, you know, there's no extra bracha. Shabbos day, now I figured out, I figured it out. I was right. I wasn't. I didn't know if there was an extra bracha, but now I, uh, I, I know. I see he's drinking, so I know that it's okay. The problem is, what's the problem? The problem is that old man that is drinking the wine, right? He's drinking before the one who said the bracha is drinking. Now, the Gemara that we just learned is that you're not allowed to uh, eat until the Baitseya, the one who slices the bread, uh, uh, takes a bite. He's got the person who says the bracha, you know, he's got to see, he's got to, he, he's got to take the bite first. And here, what we're seeing is uh, this, 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 this man who we're sort of like relying on because he obviously trusted him that he's knowledgeable uh, because he's, uh, you know, he's drinking the wine after the, the, the bracha, burp, yagof, and he must know that that's all, the only bracha. So he must, he must be, uh, you know, quite, so we're relying on him. Yet, what is he doing? He's drinking before the host drank, before the one who said the bracha drank. So this is a, an issue that has to be, you know, you got to somehow find a, uh, a reconcile with, uh, with, 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 with our Gemara. And uh, Tysus gives a few answers over here. Maybe there's a difference between eating and drinking. That may be drinking, you can always drink. Eating is an issue to eat before the, the, the host uh, before the host eats. Uh, that would be inappropriate. It's, uh, not, uh, it's, you're not showing honor. But drinking is, is different. I don't know. Anyone have an explanation why that should be so? Why would drinking be different? Any thoughts? No thoughts. Okay. Does so? Does does mazon refer only to food, or would that include drink? Maybe there's a separate way to separate out drinking from eating. I'm not sure what you mean. I, I, we just said that, that Tysha says that Shema uh, maybe there's a difference between eating and drinking. That's what Tysha said. And I was asking if anyone has an explanation. And so I'm not sure, what are you saying that, that maybe there's a difference? You're saying the same thing that Tysha said? I'm saying, so when we say that, like at the end of the benching, when we say that the, the, the bracha on uh, Mazon, in other words, so sustenance, nutrients, nourishment, maybe that's because it's nourishment, it puts it in a different category than liquids. Mm -hmm. So what would that mean? That nourishing things, you need to show respect. Liquids is something that's insignificant. So you, you're emphasizing that liquids is really something that's insignificant and therefore uh, you don't have to show respect along the lines of uh, uh, an honorable uh, entrance, you have to show respect. And if it's just a hole in the wall, you don't necessarily show respect. So maybe drinking is like something insignificant. Is that, would, would you wanna word it that way? Would that be a good way to, to word it? That, that sounds good, I like close, it. Close is to that, that my explanation or is it yours? 
uh, as close to that, but maybe not so much insignificant. It's just it's a, a lower level. Right. But we want to the, the emphasis is that we're trying to explain why you don't have to show respect. So we got to like, uh, you know, build that up that uh, mm -hmm. it must be really insignificant. I, uh, you know, something along those lines, but okay, okay. Sounds interesting, sounds like a good good thought. Yes, uh, Susan? But anything that you put into your body, your body is a temple. You have to consider that, and you need, everything that goes into your body is from a shem. Uh-huh. So okay. how can you dif differentiate between a liquid and a solid? I, I, I don't see it. Okay, okay, fine. We're just talking about honoring someone to go first well, with regard to well, drinking, it, it, drinking first or eating first. I mean, it doesn't really have to do so much with whether what's going to end up where the food is, you know, it's going to go into your body and it's going to so serve serving God. That's true, but there, there might be a difference, you know, just like you're, you're entering a room. Uh, do you have to show respect to the uh, other, to the rabbi to go first? It depends. I mean, you're entering a room. It's all because God wants it. God wants me to enter this room. Otherwise, I wouldn't be entering. But there could be a difference. If it's, you know, this, you have to show more respect. And there you don't. Go into the bathroom first. You don't make a big announcement. Oh, we're going to let the rabbi go first to, to the bathroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. you don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily uh, apply to all situations. You know? Okay. Ben? Maybe is it because we do a moiti first? And we are getting later. Maybe maybe a moiti has more weight, so you have to wait for the for the for the one that does the blessing to eat first. A moiti is is more important because because why? Because it comes first. The first thing you do in a meal is a moiti, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But here we're talking about Kiddush actually came first. Kiddush came before. We're talking about Shabbos Day. It oh, made Kiddush first. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't sound like a good... Uh, uh, doesn't work so all the, the time. Doesn't work in this situation. <laughs> um, so uh, the other way maybe of, of understanding, again, it's, it, it, Tasis doesn't clarify what he means, but uh, maybe you could say that drinking is actually more... You, you, maybe it's you could, in other words, one way that I see it is uh, along the lines of what Simone was saying that maybe drinking is considered insignificant. On the other hand, you could maybe say the opposite that drinking people become dehydrated. It's so dangerous not to drink that you never, you know, we don't like show preference to other people, to, to an important person to drink first because drinking is, is, a, is a life and death situation a lot of times. And therefore, it, uh, it's not going to, especially in those days, they didn't have air conditioning, you know, you never know. They came from a long travel. It's, it's, uh, drinking is, uh, you don't show respect for. This is like life and death. Uh, eating is another story. Eating is, uh, you know, you assume someone is going to live without the eating. People could last a few days. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's not so. Ma so maybe you could say the opposite as well. So uh, that, those are two extremes of the way of uh, differentiating. Yes, Simone. Yeah, so actually, I, I like your other explanation because we're talking about people that are living in the desert, right? So water is life and death. Drinking is life and death. And it is like sort of at the level of basic necessity. So you, you in a sense, you can't wait for other people. You kind of, you need to drink, you need to drink, you know? So uh, I don't know if we're talking specifically of people living in the desert. Uh, where did, did you see that somewhere? That well, I mean, the, the, the Middle East, the, the whole Middle East, is, whether it's Babylon or it's, you know, Palestine, uh -huh. it's, it's, that's desert. That's, that whole area is desert. Uh-huh. Okay. Is there, is there, is that scientifically, is there a reason why you would call that more desert than uh, the whole Middle East? Is it something to do with the humidity level in the whole Middle East or the, uh, the why, well, why are you? Not specific. That whole part of the world, it has a desert climate. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Okay. I'm not, uh, I'm not into that. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. All right. That's, uh, sounds good. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. That's uh, so, so maybe I'm just throwing a thought again. It's just what came to my mind. I thought we would have more understanding here, but uh, okay. Um, uh, now I did want to, uh, David is here and uh, Mordechai had mentioned uh, a story. Maybe, you know, David, a story of the Alter Rebbe with what his Mechutin, 
that they didn't know who should go first. And then they ended up both walking through a, a wall. But the, are you familiar with that story? Yeah, but I forget the details. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, maybe uh, maybe on Sunday, if any of you. Uh, I think it was Reb Levi, Reb Levi Yitzchak Yeah. And the Rebbe. Yeah. And, and what was the story? They didn't know who should go first. Right. And I'm not sure what happened after that. I, I forget. Uh-huh. All right. Well, thank you, Mordechai, for bringing it up. Maybe we'll try to find that on Sunday. It would be interesting to know what the, uh, the details. Okay. So um, so here, Tysus has a few other answers. He also says that it could be that this old man was not just a um, simple guy. He, he understood what was going on in the mind of this Amira who wasn't sure what to do. And he was being nice. And he bent down, not to drink, he bent down to make it look, to, 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 to answer the Amayra that, uh, that, that it's good enough. The bracha, what you did was good enough, and we're allowed to drink. But of course, he didn't drink. He was going to wait for the, um, the Amayra to drink. But he, uh, he caught on. He, was, he read between the lines. He was uh, perceptive, and he understood what was going on. So that's another explanation. And then the third option um, is that uh, it depends if everyone has a drink in front of them. And that would be another differentiation, a way, way of uh, making a difference between the case of our Gemara and the t- case Tesis brings from the Gemara of Psachim, uh, that the Gemara there is talking about he had, a, he had a drink in front of him. You know, for Kiddush, a lot of people, they pour wine to everyone. And then when you make Kiddush, the people who have the wine in front of them, they, they, they have, you know, they, they're, they're ready to drink. Other, other households, you, you sort of make Kiddush, and then after Kiddush, you pour the wine to, uh, to each uh, individual uh, afterwards. And um, so it seems like from that story, at least the way Tosius is, uh, well, from the way the, way the way the story sounds, is that he, uh, uh, he had wine in front of him, and, uh, and he was... Uh, you know, he, when you have wine, when you have food in front of you, you don't have to wait for the bala bias. It's when you don't have wine, you're eating from his bread, his drinking from his cup, then it's not appropriate for you to, uh, to drink before him. But if everyone's really on their own, you know, he's just saying the bracha, but you're on your own, that would be a reason to, uh, to be able to drink, to drink yourself. You not, it's not like you're, you know, it's like you're a separate, uh, it seems like you're in a separate situation than the, than the person who recited the bracha. And there isn't that responsibility, obligation of showing respect here. Or it's not a dis, at least it's not a disrespect when you drink first. So that would have practical ramifications, uh, which would mean like if someone's making hamaitzi and, uh, you know, there's uh, the, 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 the challah bread is uh, in front of you would you be uh, you know you heard his bracha uh, are you uh, or whatever bracha he's reciting and uh, you're you know you're part partaking of a meal uh, together and uh, would you be allowed to have the uh, you know it doesn't have to be Shabbos even whatever you know he recited the bracha out loud you heard the you answered on me and now you want to eat from your loaf that's in front of you. A lot of weddings, they have a, a loaf in front. You have your bread in front of you. So now, practically in this case, I mean, normally you'll just make your own hamoitzi. But let's say someone doesn't know the brachas or, you're, you know, someone, that, you know, and he's listening to the host, you know, so that would be a scenario where you're listening to his bracha, but you're going to be, you could, you, you're eating your own loaf. You're not waiting for him to eat from his big loaf, huge, you know, uh, they sometimes have these huge hollows, you know, that, uh, I don't know, maybe about three feet long. And, and uh, you yeah, know, but you're not going to wait for that challah to come. You're going to eat from your loaf. So do you have to wait till he finishes? He might be busy cutting. Who knows how long it takes to cut through that whole challah and might be cutting extra pieces. So do you wait for him or do you, can you, recite, can you uh, um, just eat right away? So here in Shulchan Aruch, the Shulchan Aruch uh, brings this. In chapter uh, 167, uh, paragraph 15, Ein hamasubin rishayim litoim ad shiyitam habaytzeya. You're not allowed to taste until the baytzeya, until the 
person who slices um, uh, tastes. But you can give everyone their portion uh, before he eats. And they, they should wait until he eats. So in other words, let's say he wants to give his parents or his, uh, you know, his Rebbe is, is there, but he's reciting the Hamaitzi. And so he, he can give the Chala to others, according to the Ramah here. He gives the Chala to... Uh, to others, and um, uh, they will wait until he actually eats, even though they're getting given the, the challah first. And um, uh, if all of them are eating from their own loaf, they don't need the loaf that the uh, slicer is cutting. So they are allowed, they're allowed to taste theirs first. And if it's Shabbos, they need to have Lecha Mishnah besides what's in front of the slicer. And then they are able to taste before the Baitseya, before the slicer. And I should mention that uh, they are allowed to taste first if they have their own, even though the Mishnah adds in, even though they're Yaitse with the Bracha of the Mavarech, even though the person who's reciting the Bracha uh, they're yaitzah with his bracha, but they could still have, they could still eat first because their own is in front of them. And that's based on this taisus over here, that that would be a differentiation. And that would be how to answer the Gemara in Psachim. And this Gemara would be based on that. Um, and it's based also on a Yerushalmi. I should uh, exclude the Yerushalmi. There's a Jerusalem Talmud statement as well that sort of uh, reconciles, it, that seems to reconcile, uh, emphasize this point as well. Yes, Susan. Okay, so if two rabbis are related and their parents are in the meal, so and and the the person who's the host, it's a just a, a hall, a big hall. And so who do you show the two rabbis? Who do they uh yeah, so they can so one of them the whole the, the well whoever is paying for the meal uh, oh. you know could recite the the, the bracha and uh, okay and uh, you could give if he wants to give the other rabbi uh, challah before he eats he right. can but the, the other but whoever gets the challah if they don't have challahs in front of them uh, you know for, if they don't have their own little challah rolls which is common to do you have, everyone has their own challah right rolls, right but if they don't and they have to get the challah from the host from the from the one challah there's only one big challah but the two know. rabbis show respect to each other and the parents are kind of on the side but that, i didn't say anything about that oh. i didn't discuss that at all okay i was just saying that that person who's paying for the meal probably is the main you know cuts the three foot challah and uh either they have their own challahs or they don't and either way if they have, you know, if they have their own challahs, they're going to make their own hamaytzi or whatever. If they're waiting for the host, he can respect them if he wants to. And he can respect his in-laws and his father-in-law and his right, uh, right. lady, whatever, whoever he wants to give respect to. Okay. Right. So, um, yes, uh, David. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is the same story, but you were asking me before with the Alta Rebbe. Is yeah. that the story where the door frame widened? In order that they should both go and buy the, together at the same time. Uh, again, I, I don't know the story. I have a, it oh. rings a bell, but Mordechai is the one who uh, who uh, mentioned the story, and I, I it does ring a bell, but I don't uh, remember any of the details. And uh, so I was uh, excited to, to, that you might be in, you might remember them. All right. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll hopefully find it after for Sunday. There's, okay. there's, there's, a, there's a story when they were trying to leave the hall and the, and the uh, doorway was all the way at the other end of the room and they were all the way at the other end and there was a huge crowd and they were trying to figure out how they can get out of the room, how, do they, how they can go out. So uh, Rabbi Levi Yitzhak said to the Alta Rebbe, you know, we could just walk through the wall. Mm. You know, we could just walk through and, and get, get out of the room. So the Alta Rebbe said, we don't have to show everything that we can do. And they just went about it in a natural way to go out the uh, entrance. 
wait, so that there's two stories. One is where the door widened, and the other one is 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 where they were they needed to get out, and they just waited. yeah. I think that yeah. I think uh-huh. the widening uh-huh. one was when they were trying to get in, and they uh-huh. didn't know who to go first. Then the door wide, uh-huh. door frame widened, I think. And then uh-huh. in the uh, the other the other part of the story is at the end of the at the end they were trying to go out, and there was this huge crowd between them and the doorway, and they were at the other at uh, the opposite end, and. Rebbe Levi Yitzhak suggested that they just walk through the wall. Uh-huh. And the Alta Rebbe said, just because we can do it, we don't have to do it. We don't have to show it. <laughs> let's, not, let's just go na- natural. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. Wow. Right. Okay. Okay. Shkayach. Uh, thank you, David. Yes, Simon. Uh, just a little uh, practical or realistic kind of approach to things, quite different yeah. from the other one, which is the earlier story about a uh, older man and he picked up the wine to drink before the bracha was finished. Maybe he was hard of hearing and he just saw that the uh, rabbi had said something and he assumed he finished it. You know, they didn't have hearing aids in those days. He was an older man. I think that happens a lot. So, um, yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that. We're going to see an interesting discussion on this tomorrow based on the synagogue in Alexandria, there was a huge, huge synagogue similar. I mean, this was a, a place where you could not hear the, the chazan. It was huge. It was like a, a you know, a, a, a baseball uh, a stadium, you know, uh, and, and uh, the, 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 the way they arranged it was uh, that when it came time to say a main, they would hold up a sign so you would know when to say a main. That's, uh, you know, uh, similar to what you're saying, that maybe he didn't hear the, uh, the bracha here. But um, uh, it's it not so simple. Rabbi, it wasn't a sign, it was a flag. A flag, excuse me. Excuse me, sorry. Okay. Uh, so so, um, so uh, the thing is, it, it seems that, uh, you know, according to the way you're saying it, maybe he made a mistake. Uh, but uh, I don't think we can assume, I, I, as if he's relying on this man, maybe he knows him personally. So he probably, uh, you know, I would, I would assume he, he, he didn't make a mistake in uh, trusting him. You know what I mean? Like, like I would assume he, uh, it was correct what he did, that he, uh, that he trust, he relied on him. But anyway, yeah, maybe, I don't know, it doesn't, uh, doesn't say either way. Okay, so, uh, oh. Time is almost up. Let's see. Okay, so we have this mission of brewer here with the uh, even if he's being mighty. Now uh, there is one other mission of brewer here that um, what happens if you don't need to recite? Um, you don't need the the host to say the bracha, so you're really going to recite your own bracha. Let's say you didn't hear the host. Maybe uh, Simone's case, you didn't hear the host because uh, you couldn't hear him or, or you didn't have in mind when he said the bracha. So you're reciting your own bracha. Then would you be able to, um, he, they're passing around the challah. He still hasn't eaten his piece yet. The host didn't eat his piece yet. Still passing around the challah. And uh, can you recite your own hamaitz? You don't need his hamaitz. You're reciting your own hamaitz. So maybe you could say, you could then eat first. So the simple understanding is um, that if you're reciting your own hamaytzi, so then you're not really relying on the host, and it would be inappropriate for you to eat first before the one who said the bracha. In other words, it's all boils down to the bracha here. The, the one who's reciting the bracha, he should eat first, and you are secondary. Uh, you know, to him, you can't, you shouldn't eat first. Inappropriate. If, if, if you're not relying on his bracha, then would you be allowed to recite the bracha yourself and and uh, and eat right away? Um, and uh, so the prima godim, he, the mishabur brings down a prima godim that says that he, he's mitzadi, he's leaning towards that even if you're not fulfilling the your your bracha with his bracha, meaning you're not uh, being exempt, and everyone's reciting the 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 the, the bracha themselves, 
since you're relying on his loaf, it wouldn't be appropriate to uh, taste the bread before he tastes it. So in other words, what it seems like the question of the prima godam is, is this a concept of a bracha or that, you know, because he recited the bracha or does it have to do with the, the host being the host? Now, is it the fact that he recited the bracha, that the bracha should be, the person who said the bracha should be fulfilling first, having the fulfillment of his bracha first? Or does it have to do with uh, just the fact proper etiquette at the meal that, uh, you know, you sort of, you wait for the, for the whole, you're eating from his bread, you wait for him. So is it, a, is it connected to the bracha or is it proper etiquette? of just being the host and eating eating from his uh, from his bread. Okay, well, we're going to stop here. Have a wonderful Shabbos, everyone. Zai gesund. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Have, have a great long. Shabbos. Good to everybody, stay safe. Thank you, Rabbi. Good Shabbos, everybody. Good Shabbos.